you had fun or that Elisa was interesting and stimulated some, some thoughts. So we had uh, launching a product and or a brand at the back, uh, <coughs> announcing VC funding here, am I right? That's good luck, don't worry. Um, and here we had some thinkers with, uh, you know, a <laughs> two leadership campaign. So they, they argued that this was the most difficult one out of the three. So um, we leave them for uh, last so that we can uh, enjoy the, the fundings. So shall we start with the uh, company or product launch at the back? And what I would love you to do is to share with everybody else, uh, I guess, the roadmap that you put together and some key points in terms of the plan. And it would be really interesting to know if uh, you had any big challenges to, to overcome as well. Yeah, yeah. okay. Um, so uh, we were trying to identify key well, key things that we should think about before we did a, the launch of our product. Um, we were trying to, I think the general consensus is that we have to know who we are, what, what we want to do before we actually launch the product. So the first thing is know your market. So look at the other people in your space, talk about or look at the social media side of things, the content, who's talking about what, which journalists are talking about what. Um, the main thing is you you need to know who you are, which um, I, I'm from a startup we've just launched. Uh, we had no idea who we were or where we sat in the market. We've launched four different products but haven't launched it to market in the last, well, I've been there two years. So, um, yeah, timing, are you ready? Everyone talks about timing. We were never ready at the beginning when I joined and they told me it was wonderful. It was all going well. We, um, we had investors lined up a year ago. Uh, it wasn't ready for... Our market, the, the best time to launch for us is March, April. If you miss March and April, you have to wait till the next March and April, which we've done, and it's finally worked, which is great. Um, who's the face of the company? We had a bit of discussion about this. So my CEO is the face of the company. He's a recognizable person in fund management. Um, but it's not just the face of the company. It's also the identity. There's no way that my CEO would go on Twitter um, and tweet about our market and what we're doing. Um, so I'm the behind-the-scenes face of the, of the company on social media, which is terrifying. So if anyone wants to slate our company, um, come to me first before he finds out. So um, We then looked at what are the key messages that you want to get over? Why do you differentiate yourself? What do you want to tell people about without overtly selling yourself? Um, channels and audience, do you want to talk to the investors? This is one of the questions that you guys presented to us. Um, you need to get the attention of customers, investors, journalists at the same time. Like, How do you do it? Um, the company I work for only use uh, social media for journalists. Um, we do B2B and we're targeting mid-tier um, SMEs uh, in finance directors and MDs who don't actually use, use social media. So we do social media to do the journalist channels. We then target various vertical publications to hit the MDs and the FDs. Um, we also go out to the accountancy, the, those people that were considered as multipliers, so accountants, lawyers, private equity houses, etc. And then content, where should it go? We uh, one of our key investors is the government. They don't want a testimonial saying how great our product is because they also finance other products. So we had to write a specific case study for them. And that then went to various other trade bodies where they can't be seen to endorse our product, but they um, would like to promote us because we join them eventually when we have enough money to be their member. So yeah, those are the, the seven key points. It's all about knowing who you are. Um, you can't really launch a product without knowing who you are or who you're going to talk to. So. so that's your biggest learning point. You can't learn. I think so. <laughs> okay. I think you've done fantastically well. What was the biggest challenge? What was like the point of discussion that took you longer to really nail down? I think that's Dylan's comment. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to distill. Um, I think it was working out channels versus communities so we had a bit of a, a round or round on twitter which is kind of both it's a way of talking to people and it's also a a community in itself and we spent some time talking about kind of strayed into the the thought leadership bit as well um talking about how 
you can kind of come across as a thought leader in more than just your 140 characters you know how do you show that you're connected with the industry it's who you who you're engaging with who you're talking to who's talking to you um and and using it in that way as well so channels channels versus communities and audiences um and we started talking about sort of how you would target traditional media i.e you know if you don't have the aid of you know external support or lovely Gorkana, how how would you go about you know working out who the right people are which between us is really a combination you know you've been in the offices of your customers prospects you know what are the magazines on their table what are they reading what do they say oh i read the article in whatever the other day take note of that do a google news see who's writing about your topics and um understand it that way yeah. well done hooray um, we launched we're well done uh, i think it's yeah um amazing list well done so uh if i just summarize the points know yourself know your customers and a huge amount of planning because you only have one opportunity to launch something and uh, a few companies try to launch several times but that doesn't quite work uh so well done again fantastic and they also done a little bit of your job talking about all leadership <laughs> there so i'm just saying no pressure for you guys but um so moving on to the vc table who is going to be our spokesperson for this table I've been volunteering. Sure, so. our, our case study was about announcing VC funding. We just secured $10 million worth of Series A funding. So we spent some time at the beginning thinking about what does this actually mean to us in terms of $10 million? What does it mean to people we're likely to communicate with? How significant is it? What are our objectives of any particular PR launch that we do or PR communication that we do around this $10 million funding? So we, we came to the conclusion that VC funding is one of the things it is, is a foot in the door. It's an endorsement of the business by um, a potentially well-known investor. They've done due diligence on you. Um, it, it provides a level of credibility and trustworthiness. You know, one of the things that's key to us in fintech and uh, innovations around finance <coughs> is credibility and trustworthiness. Yep. And this is a great endorsement of that from, a, from a, at least one qualified third party. It's also the chance, any launch around this uh, $10 million VC investment is a chance for us to tell stories that we've been looking for a route to, to tell in the past, but hadn't really been able to get, a, get that foot in, the, uh, foot in the door. We hadn't worked out a way of disseminating them. So then we started to think about what the audiences were that we were trying to reach, who we were trying to communicate with here, and we came up with something I think, sort of similar to, to the, the team over here, investors, customers... Uh, our competitors in the industry, um, potential employees, you know, there are a variety yep. of different people we're trying to communicate with here. And in order to get the message across to each of those different groups, we'd probably have to employ different channels. And there was no hard, so different channels, different routes in terms of different types of publication. So specialist and in industry press, the business pages, um, you know, Evening Standard came up as something which our customers would be likely to read, our um, potential employees, so many people read on the way home from work, even things like business pages in the Telegraph that people will, or the Daily Mail that people will tend to thumb through. And we, are, we talked about the FT and Wall Street Journal, how they might mm -hmm. ask for exclusives, but weighing up whether or not the value in giving them an exclusive would have a trickle-down effect from the credibility that we got <coughs> through, through those kind of, that kind of level of exposure. And we spent a while talking about TechCrunch as well. Yep. In fact, you know, TechCrunch, it's not just for the, for the geeks, it's, um, it's amazing how far news disseminates from TechCrunch. Uh, tech we diverted a little bit there talking about issue jumps and um, how we could sort of endorse... Uh, we're not, not doing again. very much. Again, <laughs> your job again, uh, just we'll, saying. And maybe we'll uh, divert uh, away off that and come uh, back. Uh, <laughs> we'll leave that completely. So then we started sort of looking, coming up with a little bit of a plan, you know, about who's going to lead the announcement, whether or not yep. it's going to be the VC or whether it's going to be us. And uh, we, we thought perhaps there's, there's no harm even in perhaps talking about who knows different contacts at different uh, elements of the media best. Um, no harm in uh, there being a sort of a, a dual uh, pitch from the, in, the the investors, the VCs, and from us because it, yep. there could be relevancy there to different areas of the communities that we're trying to contact. We talked about uh, preceding the the, the um, message about preparation for different kinds of interviews, making sure that we weren't <coughs> caught out through particularly technical um, interviews or 
interviewers who are trying to make us give away too much confidential in, in, mm -hmm. information or valuation information, which could then prejudice, prejudice us with our investors, which wouldn't be a particularly good thing. Yep. And then we even looked at post-announcement, what we were going to do in order to maintain or continue to grow the momentum that we'd uh, initiated around this particular announcement. So not a case of throwing the announcement out there, phew, we've made it, and then just disappearing into the ether, but keeping it going and trying to build a sort of a regular spot or almost from a public publicity perspective on that. And using it as an opportunity to set up future stories with journalists to get involved yep. in. Uh, I'm not going to go into thought leadership, but you know, we'll go in <laughs> as becoming a sort of an industry observer potentially or an industry uh, a commentator. We looked a little bit about so, uh, social media, but with them we, but not very much because we were coming to an end. Um, and even thinking, <laughs> even thinking about using some of the investment that we got from the VC funding to incentivise um, our social media followers in order to sort of build up, uh, to build up our customer base and get more uh, hits on the on the website. So, I think those were the key things, weren't there? Was there yeah. anything else that we? Yeah, I think should very comprehensive. Yeah, very comprehensive. <laughs> well done. So, biggest learning point, like the biggest thing that you discuss and you now realise, oh, I really didn't know about that. You sort of said um, how important the initial investment is to us as a company. It would be really important, but how is the press going to retell that story, or how are we going to get it? How are we going to get it to raise their attention of what's us? What's the angle? Yeah, what's the yeah. angle? Yeah. Okay. And what is the most exciting bit of everything that you discussed? Like the really fired up the conversation and you're thinking, oh, when I get my big round of funding, I can't wait to do that for my company. I was going to say, the other side of that, kind of the scariest thing I think we <laughs> talked about was like how prepared you have to be. Because yep. you don't know, like we gave an, you gave an example about um, being interviewed afterwards and then the Wall Street Journal then wanted to ask further questions and they kind of grilled the company more than they expected. So I think that's something that I hadn't considered first of all. It's the first time when a company really needs to be very precise yeah. when going public because when you're launching you can say, you know, this is what we're doing now and more information to come. But when it starts to be about funding and third parties are involved uh, and again they are credible third parties we've probably done it a few times beforehand uh, precision uh, and accuracy is really important so that's probably the first time where a company needs to do that in a more um, focused and concerted way uh, so that's I guess one learning point the other one is uh, coordination <coughs> Uh, making sure that you have everything uh, organized and aligned with your VCs, making sure that nothing leaks too early and that, you know, timing is right and you have a window of opportunity to get that done. Um, and that probably uh, exclusives are overrated uh, slightly. If you have a good news, then good news is going to get covered regardless. Good. Well done. Very uh, comprehensive plan. Round of applause for the VCD. Thank you. Oh, well done. Well, <laughs> the thought leadership table. This is the table of the big thinkers, the big philosophers. So I think we are all really looking forward to hearing what you came up with. Who is going to be our lovely speaker? Um, so I think there's no wonder why all the teams ended up covering some of the thought leadership aspects because when you start talking, when you start thinking about how you're going to go out the media, that's where kind of the seed starts. But you know, who am I? What is my message going to be? It doesn't necessarily fundamentally change from the point where you're defining your product to the point where you're going out with the mm -hmm. VC. It only needs to become, I guess, perhaps a bit more precise and more narrowed down so that you know you actually have, you can have a proper plan in terms of who you are, what do you stand for, and how do you actually want to be presented within the media? Um, I, I missed the beginning, so I don't know. Is, is everyone here in fintech? Yeah. No. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So you know, you will all agree that you know trust and credibility are absolutely key. And so the idea about the thought leadership aspect is to ensure you have the right message, and you um, you are able to go out to the media world and establish yourself as a proper, trustworthy, credible company. 
Um, and so you end up, uh, sorry. Uh, no, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> um, and so let's assume that you nailed your message, right? Um, apart from that, it also needs to be relevant to what people are actually talking about, what the journalists are talking about. You need to know what the hot topics are, because it's very easy to tap into a product announcement or a VC mm -hmm. announcement. That's easy. That's a quick win. You know, it's easy to sell. <laughs> the question is, no, but, but, but it's true. It's, it's, true. it's getting it's a bit con it's confrontational. Uh. How, how do you actually make sure that you're still there with the journalists, with the media, with your consumers all the time, every week, every two weeks, every month, right? And so um, knowing what are the hot trends in the marketplace are absolutely key, and you do that through uh, monitoring what are the search trends, what are the, you know, what journalists actually write about. You should probably know your industry in terms of, okay, what are the big changes that are expected to happen over the next six months, over the next 12 months? Have, have proper list of, okay, so if these are the hot issues in the market, what is my take on them? What is my comment gonna be on them? Have that properly prepared. Um, when you then have that prepared, you somehow need to be, to be able to sell your, uh, your comments to the media. And that's when you need to kind of tap into all the different people who worked in the business. It doesn't matter if your startup is a month old. If your founder or CMO or CFO or the head of PR or content manager, it doesn't really matter, had lots of experience within certain fields, tap into that. Because at the end of the day, it's about you're going to be sending out something to the journalist saying, you know, hey, this and that has X number of years of experience, and here's our comment to this topic, and we disagree, right? Or we agree, or we want to add to. So it's all about making sure that we have the right credibility for the journalist as well. So tap into everything that you have there. Um, once you start doing that, and once you get quoted the first time and the second time, it's a bit of a, 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 a you know, kind of like a, um, a rolling ball, right? A snowball. As at a certain point, it doesn't really matter. No one will really remember what was your actual experience in the past. <laughs> You've been quoted so many times, you will end up being the one quoted on that topic. And the, uh, the aim is to become the expert so that for every topic that goes out around the, you know, the, the, your industry or a certain issue within your industry, you will be the one being quoted for. Um, and I guess, I guess it's really down to, I mean, we can, yeah. I mean, it's really down to how do you make sure that that happens. And so, you know, you can create your the list of journalists that you want to mm -hmm. uh, keep keep in touch with. Um, and I mean, there, there are different all sorts of um, um, kind of like databases that you can take. That you can just find the, the information on. You can uh, use social media. So, you know, contact with get in get in touch with uh, journalists over Twitter, over Facebook, over LinkedIn. Make sure that you keep on uh, engaging them with. The, with the topics that you want to be in the news for, so that they establish you as an expert and that they end up coming to you if they're looking for a comment. Um, I guess that's kind of it. Yeah. 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 Everyone, 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 I guess perhaps the last thing that we kind of mentioned was about, um, and, and I think Dan kind of touched on that, and that is, you know, how, how controversial do you want to be? Mm -hmm. How out there are you willing to be? And that's something that you probably need to define up front because it needs to be consistent. If you're the bad boy, be the bad boy. If you're the, you know, the more conservative, be the more conservative. That's fine. But you know, just be consistent. It's relevant for journalists, it's relevant for consumers. Yeah. So um, I guess it was slightly unfair to give you uh, the thought leadership um, scenario because it actually is uh, the most open and complex one and is something that uh, you know you'll probably only launch once you will have maybe a, a handful of uh, announcements around raising uh, capital but actually thought leadership is something that a um, startup or all the business will do on an ongoing basis so I know that something that came up as part of this conversation was finding the time so I know that one of the big debates that you had was even if I have the best ideas and the best opinions how do I find the time to do that uh, on an ongoing basis and in a timely manner, well, in a timely manner. Absolutely, key. absolutely 
Um, and I know that something else that you discussed was really uh, monitoring news, making sure that you're always on top of the news agenda for very quick comments and quick replies, making sure that exactly you are timely. Um, and I know that you also discussed uh, whether that's a um, thought leadership is a process to also get uh, customer feedback and to interact with your customers as well. So it really is a huge and important part of our PR campaign uh, in the longer term. It's not just uh, something to fill in the gaps in between your launch and your next product or your next uh, announcement. Um, so well done. Uh, I mean, great thinkers. So I wasn't expecting anything less. Well done. Um, are there any uh, questions at all? We made you work tonight. And uh, maybe you were thinking to come here and have a glass of wine and not doing anything. But I hope that we got you thinking and that sharing the table with other people that either have done it before or haven't um, uh, kind of got the opportunity, give you, gave you the opportunity of um, getting feedback and different thoughts from, from other people. Um, do we want to actually select the best table? I mean, I'm a quite a competitive person, so I think we should. Uh, so shall we have a round of applause for the uh, launch table? Okay. So what about the VC table? Did they do well? Yeah. Yes. Right, pretty good, pretty good, pretty good. What about the thought leadership table? You're generating your own buzz. Yeah. <laughs> You're generating your own buzz. Okay, thank you very much, everyone. There is a um, guide available online. I know, uh, Eddie, they will all get a link to that. So, cool. Um, very quick.